And we're going in depth this morning on the impact of red tide. When a boom, a bloom gets close to the coast or even in the bay, it is almost impossible to miss. The smell of dead fish can be horrible, and if it's really bad, it can irritate your respiratory tract. But doctors don't think it stops there. We're looking now at side effects red tide might have on the human brain. ABC Action News reporter Stasi Olmos went inside the research lab and explains these growing concerns. When that last bad red tide we had, I had sort of this hacking cough, um, and I'd never really experienced that before, and it went away. And then this year, this cough has sort of come back again, and I suspect that it's caused by living so close to the beach and being exposed to red tide. It's symptoms like that that Sarasota resident James Powell has to report as a participant of a recent study on the effects red tide may have on the human brain. These tubes are the ones that we'll be using to potentially look at lipid levels and potentially metabolites or active brevitoxin that might still be in the blood plasma. The study is out of the Roskamp Institute in Sarasota. It compares those with high exposure and little to no exposure, their symptoms as well as blood and urine samples. The toxin uh, that the red tide releases is a neurotoxin. It damages the nervous system. That's how it kills wildlife, it's how it kills fish, manatees, dolphins. And, and we know it can affect us as well. In the early 2000 red tide blooms, scientists conducted a 10-year study on respiratory effects, specifically asthma, but also started documenting other symptoms. General malaise. Um, not feeling good, a little lethargy. That's when they looked into emergency room visits from 2005 to 2009 and discovered a significant uptick in neurological symptoms in zip codes on the coast. What we found is there was an uptick in things like uh, headache in particular during a red tide. This is the layer of peripheral blood mononuclear cells or white blood cells. In the Roskamp lab, they're currently looking at 250 people, comparing the level of toxin in the blood and how their bodies respond. For instance, we can see antibodies to the toxin in the blood uh, of certain individuals long after the toxin is gone. And one of the things that's very interesting that we've seen already is there are quite big differences in the levels of antibody to the toxin, even when they haven't been exposed for six months or so. One question they're hoping to answer is, are high levels of antibodies a good thing or a bad thing? Do you have fewer neurological complaints if you have high levels of antibody because the antibodies are mopping up the toxin? Or does it work the other way around and somehow the antibody causes problems? We just simply don't know at this point. And long term, will red tide have any effect on diseases like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's? Can something like this toxin make things worse or not? Hopefully the answer isn't, is no, but nobody's looked at this before. We really need to uh, make sure that there's, there's not a significant public health risk here. Dr. Mullen and his colleagues say with so many people moving to Florida, specifically the coast, the answer to this study may be more important than ever. Reporting from the Gulf of Mexico, I'm Stasi Olmos, ABC Action News.